Now tonight we have a special program, yes, for the entire night. Right now we're going to deal with the primary school and under. And when I first started dating Angel, I spent the first couple of months following her around Atlanta with my little video camera to all her speaking engagements. She had more than me. So I'm very excited to introduce her. She's in education as well as being educated. She teaches business classes and she also has taken many more classes than I did. And it's great to be qualified, but it's also awesome to have a wife that's more qualified than you are. So I get to lean on that a little bit. Now we have together a lot more degrees. So ladies and gentlemen, Well, good night, everyone. Good night. It's a pleasure to be here. I've been enjoying the, the conference, the Crack Door Conference, and she's talking about purpose. And, you know, purpose is one of the most important things to God, and we're going to be talking about that. My message is entitled, The Story of Purpose. I have them put my slides up. How many people in here like food? I know I do. I love food. I love the food I've gotten here. I enjoy food. How many people have a favorite food? Okay, how about this one? How many of you guys' favorite food is pizza or KFC? Uh-huh, yeah. So you guys are no different than the kids in the U.S. I did my research, so I know what you guys like. Well, here's the thing. We're going to talk about the, your purpose. We're going to um, start with my um, slides, the story of purpose. Um, the first slide, we can just go there, is Matthew 4, verse 4. Let's look at that, and everybody can read, so let's try to read this together. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So... How many know that you cannot live without eating food? Is that true? How many people know that after even just a day or so of food, you start to kind of get a headache, you get a little tired, and then you, if you continue not eating, you probably will die, yes? Is that right? Okay. Well, the scripture tells us that man does not live only by food, only by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the word, the, the mouth of God. And what God is saying to us is that life is very important, but the word of God is life to us. So if God has spoken a word to you about purpose, that word is even more important to your life, to your survival than the food you eat. And we said food is very important, right? And you will die without eating food. But God is saying here, you won't live only by eating natural food. You will live by the words that come out of his mouth. And for you, that may be a word that you got. Some of you are this high. Maybe some of you are this high, but maybe you got a word when you were this high. That same word is the word from God that is going to sustain your life. So John 5, 34, let's read this one together. And Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Now, how many know that when Jesus was growing up, he obviously ate regular food, right? Now, he may not have had like KFC or he may not have had pizza, but there was food, right, for him to go from here on up to an adult, Yes. But he also said here in John that my food or what really sustains me is doing the will of God, doing what God told me to do, doing the word that God spoke to me and told me to do and completing my purpose, right? Okay. So what's the point of living if you don't know your purpose? Because God is the one that provides.
provides us with a purpose. But if you don't know God's purpose for your life, the only thing you're doing is going through the motions like normal. You're eating, you're sleeping, you're working, you're playing sports, you're playing video games, you're doing everything that you think is normal. But if you don't know your purpose, you don't know how to live. You don't know the direction to fulfill. And Jesus said before that my food or the thing that sustains me, that makes me strong, is doing the will that God gave me. So here in Genesis chapter 1, verse 28, what we find is the first thing that God did was he gave man purpose. He told man, this is what I created you to do, right? And then there, um, Genesis 1, verse 28, it says, Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. This is the first thing God declared over man's life. This is at the beginning in chapter 1. This is before God even breathed life into man. You understand? God spoke, let us create man in our image. And then the next thing he did was gave purpose. He declared this is what man's purpose is, right? He could have said, I'm going to create man and this is what man is going to eat because food is important. But instead, he said, let's create man, and the first thing that man needs to survive is purpose. He needs to hear why I created him. This is the word that's going forth that gives man um, direction. Okay? Next slide. The second thing he said is this. Then God provided food. He said, And God said, see, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed. But to you it shall be for food. Okay, so the bottom line is the first thing God did was declare man's purpose. The first thing he did was told, was said to man, this is what you're supposed to do in your life, which shows that the purpose is more important than even eating to God. God wants you to know his purpose for your life. Number one, then he tells you this is how you're going to live. Instead, he didn't say, let us create man, and man is going to eat this, and then this is what man is going to do. He said, no, let us create man and woman, and then this is what man is going to do. And then he said, and this is what man is going to eat. But we already know how important food is, right? To eat, you will die. But if you don't know your purpose, you will die. And God declares purpose as number one. When he said, let us create man in our image. And then he went on to say, and man will do this. Be fruitful and multiply. Have dominion over the earth. And he blessed man and so on. And then he said, okay, And now because food is important, oh, by the way, man, see, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of all the earth and every tree and so on for food, okay? So God's priority is, number one, you need to know your purpose. Because if you don't know your purpose, you will die. Number two, then, is food. If you don't eat food, you will die. So, Jeremiah 1.5 reminds us that all of us was given a purpose by God. Because here is what the scripture says. And let's read this one together. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. In here, God is saying, look, before you were even put in your mom's belly, I already said what I'm going to, what I want you to do. 
You understand? So by the time your mom had you and nine months you came and then now look at you now, the word that God declared before you even were birthed existed. Purpose was given earlier, even before you came about. So you, the goal is to discover what God's purpose is for you. Okay. So back to that scripture, Genesis 128, God provided purpose. And again, this is where God has, God has declared for Adam and Eve what their purpose would be. He didn't create them until chapter 2. In chapter 1, the word came forth. This is what man will do. This is man's purpose, to be fruitful and multiply, to fill the earth, subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Man and woman are supposed to control all the things that are happening in the earth. You're supposed to give an offering so it can be sown. You're supposed to um, multiply your, your um, talent. So like whatever you're good at, you're supposed to do that so there's fruit. So some of you are great at art. Some of you are great at science. Some of you are great at drawing, um, building. Some of you are great at sports and so on and so forth. Some of you are great at singing. That is maybe your gift, your talent that the Lord wants you to use and be fruitful and multiply um, with. The next scripture is, or the next slide is, then in chapter 2, God provided a body for Adam and Eve. And it's right here, Genesis 2, 7. And the Lord formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. So this is chapter 2 that God made Adam. But in chapter 1, he already said what Adam was supposed to do. And then for Eve, Genesis 2, verse 21 through 22, And the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord had taken from man, he made into woman. And he brought her to the man. So this tells you now, after God already decided what they were going to do, then he created a body for them. So for you, when God dreamed of making you, okay, all of you, when he thought about you and he thought about your name, before your mom and dad had you, God already said, this one is going to be a doctor. This one is going to be a lawyer. This one is going to be a pastor. This one is going to be a teacher. This one is going to discover the cure for cancer. This one is going to be used by me in mighty, mighty things. He did that, and then you were born. And then the body was created, or birthed in that case. In Adam's and Eve's case, they weren't birthed, they were created. But for us, our beginning is when we are birth. okay? So your purpose, that's the question. What is your purpose ultimately? At the bottom core of everything, it comes down to Revelations 4, verse 11. And let's read this one together. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they were created. So the bottom line is, we were created to give God pleasure. Not to give him displeasure. Not to cause him sadness. Not to make his heart grieve. Not to make him feel sorry that he made us, that we're being disobedient. That's not our purpose. The bottom line is to please him. It may look different, though, because you may be called to be something different in life than the next person. But in that that he called you to do, you must bring him pleasure because that's why you were created. That is the bottom line for all of us. So how do you please God? Well, at your age, how do you please God? 
three biggies are, number one, honor your parents. Number two, submit to authority. And number three, choose God's choices. So the first one is honor your parents. That's Ephesians 6, 1 through 3. It said, oh, let's read this one together nice and loud, okay, everybody? Real loud. Children, obey. Wait, wait, wait. Let's stop. Let's stop. Let's stop. I need to hear it in your big outdoor voice. Like when you're outside and you're screaming and running around, I need to hear that. Let's try it again. All the kids, you ready? And go. Yeah. Louder, louder. Yes, honor your father and mother, which is the first command with a promise that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. Good. Sometimes we may not agree all the time with our parents. Like your parents may tell you to clean your room or they may tell you to come inside at a certain time. You can't play with these friends, but you feel like you know better but you need to honor your parents. Believe it or not, one, one time your parents were your age. They went through everything you went through. They've gone through more things than you've been through, and they'll be able to teach you more just by talking to you than you could ever try to go out and experience and have a lot of headache and heartache and regret. So you need to honor your parents because they're very wise, because you'll live longer, and that pleases God. That makes God's heart happy. That brings him pleasure, which aligns, which is right in order with your purpose. Okay? So an example of that is like King David, for example. David had parents. The Bible only talks to us about Jesse, but he obviously had a mom because you had a dad. So Jesse was his father, and he told him, I need you to go tend the sheep. He didn't complain. He went out and did it. And how many know that sheep? can really smell bad. Yes. And sheep, they kind of run around and get lost. They do whatever they want to do, right? But David didn't complain. He stayed out there. He sought after the sheep. And what happened? God found favor in David. God anointed David to be king. David's purpose was to be king over Israel. But I believe if he was disobedient, he didn't honor his parents, he may not have gotten that chance. Don't you want to complete the thing that God dreamed of you doing before you were born? Don't you want to do that? Well, one way to do that is to honor your parents. Why? Because it pleases God and you'll live long. I don't know about you, but I want to live long, 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 long. I love my mom. I love my dad. I always listen to them. I am obedient to them. You do the same. Submit to authority. Hebrews 13, 17. All the kids, nice and big. Let's read this one with your outdoor voice. Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls as they that must give account that they may do it with joy and not with grief. For this is unprofitable for you. Submit to authority. Those authorities in your life, in addition to your parents, could be your teachers. They actually are your teachers. The directors and administrators at school. Those individuals have been placed there, believe it or not, by God. Even if they don't know God, God knew you were going to be at that school, and God decided who was going to be your teacher. Because God was thinking about you and your purpose. And he knew which teachers would be the best teacher with the experience to help you get to the next level. So you need to submit to those authorities. You need to obey them. Don't be disobedient. Also, in the church, the apostles, the prophets, the teachers, the ushers, the elders, all the leaders, the adults, for the children, the adults, these are authorities in your life. If you're obedient to them, submit to them. They say, sit down, stand up. Don't run around, don't this. Don't go up and down the hall. Don't be out in the street. Whatever they're telling you, just say, okay. Just submit to the authority. That pleases God's heart. Don't you want to make God happy? Don't you want to fulfill your purpose? So 
So Joseph in the Bible is a great example of that. You know the story of Joseph. Joseph was the guy that had brothers that were a little bit jealous of him. His father showed favor on him, gave him a really nice coat, and really loved him. And the brothers were kind of disappointed. So he ultimately was sold into slavery. And that was not fair. But by being sold into slavery, he submitted to authority. He understood that if he submitted to the people around him who are responsible for him, God would stay with him and God would bless him. And ultimately, you know what happened to Joseph? Because Joseph submitted to the authorities, the, the prison guards, Potiphar, all the people that were in charge of his life, he was promoted to second in command in Israel. And his purpose was to be in position so that he could save Israel from the famine when there was no food. If he had been um, non-submissive to the authorities, he would not have been given that opportunity. God would have been upset with him. He may not have been trusted by God to bring food for Israel when it was time. So your purpose, you don't want to lose your purpose, so submit to authority. And the final one is choose God's choices. Whatever God chooses, chooses for you to do, just do it. Choose what makes him happy. You sow what you reap. And so you want to be careful with the choices you make in school, at home, here at church, or even when you're hanging out with your friends, when you're doing things that you know your parents wouldn't be okay with. Or if you're tempted to do things that you know is, they're wrong in the sight of the church. You know they're not um, in line with God. God would not be happy. Don't do those things. Choose God's choices. That is a third way that pleases God. Because remember, your ultimate purpose is to please God. And whatever he called you to do, he will do his part to fulfill that. But you have to do your part. Because he operates with obedience. He admires obedience. He prefers when you're obedient versus giving him money. You, you, can, you can be disobedient to your mom, and then when it's offering time and you come and you put in a dollar or $100 or even $1,000, God's looking at you like, I would rather you be obedient to your mother. You can keep your money. Like God is not impressed when you try to give him stuff if you're not listening to your mother or your dad, or you're not submitting to authority, or you're not making choices that God would make. So in closing here, you want to live with purpose and succeed, right? Who wants that? Who wants to succeed and live with purpose? Amen. So Proverbs 6, 3 tells us, or it's actually a promise from God, commit your actions to the Lord and your plans will succeed. It's just, that, it's just that easy. It's a promise. If you have something that you're looking to do, commit it to God. Like if you say, you know what, I'm the one that wants to be a doctor. I'm the one that wants to be a lawyer. I'm the one that wants to write books. I'm the one that wants to speak. I want to preach the word. Whatever it is that you feel God has called you to do, commit it to him. And then you will succeed in the plans that you have. And then finally, Psalms 37, verse 4. Delight thyself also in the Lord. Let's read this one together. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of your heart. Amen. So if your heart's desire is to do something great for the kingdom of God, if that is really what you want, just delight yourself in him. Spend time with him. Talk to him. Pray. But overall... Honor your parents, submit to authority, and choose what God would choose. Choose his choices. And those are the main things that will make you successful in school, in your home, in church, and when you're with your friends. Amen? Amen.